Okay, this is a test, so I'm going to be adjusting this to see how good it is. Okay, so I'm going to be doing a few different things. My name's Rose, and this is, you know, sometimes you've got, you know, garden going. Let me move this back a little bit. Alrighty. Well, if you're like me, you get the garden going, but you don't have quite enough string beans to do a whole big batch of anything. So this is kind of nice to do, and it's a probiotic thing. Um, a little jar. So I'm gonna set this in. These little weights are great. I'm going to kind of do a review on them, and I'm going to go ahead and grab a box from that. So there's different ones. This is this brand that the last one I got was uh, came a little bit different. Same kind of box. And I had been looking forever for these. I had gotten somebody that had a glass company to make me little triangles that I could set on there to weigh the stuff down. But these have a little notch, you can see here. And they come in a box like this. And uh, you can do whatever. And then I have these little guys. And this, you can look for different prices on these. These have like a thing at the top, like a baby bottle. It's a little X in there, and that kind of lets the... The uh, gas is released from it if you're just culturing something small. I have a big crock going, well, not so big, but a crock going of uh, sauerkraut, which I call it sauerkraut loosely because I have red cabbage, green cabbage, um, I have daikon radish, I have kale, I have a little bit of chard. I like the ends of the chard, the little red chards, I do that. Um, you know, I, I, I'll i have to do that one day next time I make one. You put carrots, I put carrots in it, beets in it, grate it all up, and it goes in. It's a smaller, uh, harsh crock that I do it in. But if you just want to do a small amount of things like that, and you get a pickle or, you know, some three or four cucumbers and you want to do something with it, you can do that. And then um, this is the string bean here. So these are string beans that came from my friend's garden that are organically grown, and I helped pick them. So I'll... There's only a small batch. This is a low salt brine, which I believe it's one and a half teaspoons per cup of water. And you want to use purified water. You don't want to use water that's got chlorine in it or anything. Of course, if anybody knows me, they know my preference is, is um, distilled water. But I mean, you can use on something like this, you can use spring water or your Berkey water or whatever, <laughs> purified water. Just no chlorine and fluoride in it, no chlorine and stuff like that. Anyway, what I did on these, you know, I didn't have a top, so I didn't write a date, but I just cut them up. I had some fresh dill. I don't know if you can see it. There's some fresh dill in there and a piece of garlic or two. I couldn't find any juniper berries, which I found them since, but I'm going to put a juniper berry in there. The tannins are good. Um, they pretty much stay crunchy. A secret if you're making pickles or cucumbers that are softer. If you have a grapevine around, you know, somebody that has a grapevine, you take a grape leaf and stick it down there. It's kind of pretty. A small one's fine. And then go ahead and do whatever you're going to do. And that helps the pickles stay really crispy, so I hear. Most people say they don't last long enough. But these are good to eat. Not, you know, whatever you're having, if you're having a sandwich... And I just take what I want out of it, make sure my hands are clean when I go in. Or you can use a little... What are these things? I always lose it. I have a little, I have a little pair of hands that you go like that and they get it. But at any rate, I just put it back in here. Um, if you have any whey, if you're doing um, kefir, kefir cheese or anything like that, and you have a little whey, you can put a little whey in here. If you have um, uh, some sauerkraut that you've made, you can put a little juice in there to inoculate it. And what it does is it kind of helps put the pH over so that certain bacteria don't grow in there. So if you want to do that, you can do that. You can put a little, like a quarter of a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar in here. It's not going to cause the um, it to taste vinegary or you know particularly. Um, I am going to do, I, I went ahead and did this morning, but... I didn't have things really ready, so it was kind of a haphazard thing. Is every day, let me get it and I'll show you. It's just a little treat for tomorrow. Inside of here is, let me do another thing. Yeah. 
inside of here is my kefir cheese. So I'm not very organized, but this is my kefir cheese. And I use this, we're going to make this. So I'm going to make sure I don't get too many cultures over out here. But this is really thick. You can see. See how thick it is? Mm. You know, they talk about that French yogurt on TV. And I'm going to take a big scoop of it and show you. You know, they go, it doesn't go anywhere. Well, this doesn't go anywhere either. And this is what you call kefir cheese. So what I've done is I'm in kefir mill, hit raw mill, put it in a jar. Inside this baggie, I have little kefir grains. And this is already thickening. I do this so I don't have to search these out, which you'll see. I'll probably do this tomorrow. Tomorrow, this will be... This liquid, it's pretty liquidy now. See, whoops, you, you can definitely see. Anyway, it'll be really thick tomorrow. And then what I do is I pour it through, I pour it in something, which you'll see tomorrow. And then I just let it set. So that's kind of a fun thing. And that's a good thing to do. Instead of using sour cream, I use this. And it's good to put some kind of probiotic here I am, in with anything that you're eating. So, I mean breakfast, lunch, and dinner if you can. We don't usually eat a big breakfast, and sometimes we do maybe once a week I'll make, you know, we're ketogenic, so I'll make, you know, uh, no nitrate bacon and my husband a couple of eggs, and, you know, we'll do, I'll just munch on the bacon. Um, if we, our weight is where we want it to be, which we got a little bit left to go, we've lost about 20, 25 pounds each, and I'd like to go at least another five. But, anyway, um... I forgot what I was saying. So, um, it's something about ketogenic and eating something. This is another thing I'm going to be working on that a friend of mine grows a lot of vegetables and we, she picked an onion and it just was so beautiful coming out of the ground. It's so fresh. I mean, how often do you get an onion right out of the ground? So I had it like a day and let it kind of settle from being picked and the juices and everything. I don't know if that's good or not, but I did. And I cut it up, and um, Barbara O'Neill, if you ever want to go on and see all kinds of things, she has uh, um, YouTube videos on doing poultice and um, making all kinds of natural remedies for things, you know, right from appendicitis down to whooping cough, which is, this is good for coughing. So I have local honey. We live in Prescott Valley, Arizona, and there's honey man stores all over the place. And I um, got some nice honey there. This happens to be mesquite, which is good for the allergies this time of year, or any time of year, really, but I got the mesquite, you can use whatever, and I just layered it, I just sliced the onion up real quick, I didn't even use a whole onion on this, I just wanted a small batch, I put the, you know, the, a little honey in there, the onion, the honey, the onion, in fact, what was beautiful about this is this honey was crystallized, it was starting to crystallize, so I couldn't pour it, so I just scooped it out the way it was, put it in there, and the juice from the onion loosened up the honey and so look at so now I, I've got to go back and look at what Barbara O'Neill says but I think what I'll do shortly I've just been too lazy is to strain it and get the onions out of it and then just put it in a bottle you know one of those plant bottles or something like this honey nothing's going to go wrong with honey honey will last for you know there's just there's so much antibacterial properties to it that it it can't uh, nothing can grow in this that's bad so I'm going to strain it and then just put it in a, in a jar. And then, you know, I don't even want to put it in the refrigerator because it's honey. And then if, um, I, even though I'm keto, if I feel like I've really got a, a bad cough or a chest thing that all my other remedies, which I have many, don't work for, then, um, then I'll go for this. Or if I know somebody that's got a really bad cough, you know, that's probably most likely where it'll go is I'll give it to them and this will help their cough. Anyway, that's enough for today. Again, my name is Rose, and remember, soon I'm going to do my uh, channel, which, of course, I have no idea what it's, what it's going to be called, but maybe just Rose's channel. Try that. And then I'm going to do the kefir. I'm going to show you how I do the kefir cheese um, and also um, how I actually do the kefir milk to get to the cheese. And then as we go along, I will be culturing things. I have cucumbers going right now, and I have these. I'll have to do later. Thank you.